Yes, ma'am. Uh, hey guys, if you need a calculator, you actually let me go ahead and start it. The, the warm up is on the board. Hold on. Now you log in. But the warm up is on the board, not on a calculator. Uh, play, that's the one calculator you can't use. Actually, let me check. So we type in. Wait, that. What's your name? Which one? Yeah, how about you? I think my other slide across the class, bro. Yeah, I see you. Trisha, grab me one. Trisha, grab me one. Come on, bro. I got you. Oh. 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 Miss Essel, I found it. It's fine. Oh, 
laboratory. I'm gonna like let you guys figure out how to how to find most of these things. However, I do want to turn your attention to two different things. The first is it asks how many times does the graph turn? Let's say for this example, it's my graph. How many times does this turn? Once. Where are you getting once from? Right, so if I was driving a car, it would be going straight, and then I would make kind of a U-turn. I would turn right here. So this is my turn. If you want to think about it formally, it's when it's going from like decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. That's how you can think about it mathematically, or you just look where it turns. I want to point that out. And then in behavior, we talked about that a little bit in this class. This is what we're going to be doing a lot of today is discovering in behavior. But I want to clarify this part right here. As your, this is saying, as your x's are increasing, going right and right and right, what is happening to your graph? So as my x's are increasing, what is this in behavior doing? Rising. It's rising, right? It's going up. As I'm approaching the left, further and further and further, what's happening in this graph? It's still rising. It's still going up, right? As my x values are getting more and more to the left, increasing to the left, my end behavior rate is increasing, okay? Does that make sense? So you're going to explore that a lot more today. Um, so we're going to be actually getting up, working in our groups. So this group, you guys are going to be assigned this part of the chalkboard. This group, you're all going to be assigned this part of the chalkboard. That group, you have that whiteboard. Yes. This group, you have this section of the whiteboard. Back group, you guys have the middle, and then front group, you have the right, and I'll erase this part. Does that make sense? We know where to go. Before you get up, um, let me give you a few more instructions. I want you guys to all graph your equations. Make sure you have the same graph so you're all on the same page. Then, as soon as you have your equations graph, go ahead and go to your whiteboard, draw your graph, and then write down on your whiteboard or chalkboard each of these pieces of information. So before you even fill out the information on your sheet of paper, I want you to fill it out on the chalkboard or whiteboard first, and then you can come sit back down once your group is done and fill it in on the paper. Does that make sense? Okay, so chalk for you guys that are here, you have a whiteboard, so just make sure you're working in groups and go ahead and get started. This one right here. You're answering A through G. A through G. Just graphing, you guys know, make sure everyone's graphing. Yep, on the graphing calculator. Oh, yeah. Make sure everyone's graphing. Y equals Y. Thank you. 
but as far as, as, far as I do now, it never would not be. Yes, they're really going to be straight now. <laughs> the zombie mat cracks me up. Mr. Kitty. Um, that's a good one. Sure. Oh, I've got you. Like what they actually are. Are
Yeah. 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 I can say 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 I can I can say 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 I Bree got to line up. Okay, guys. <laughs> Cold Cold. So, very good job getting this information. Our next thing that we're going to do is called a gallery walk. I do this a few times in college, which is interesting. Basically, what you're going to do is walk around the room looking at your classmates' uh, creations for their graphs. You're going to be making conjectures, which is just like um, ah. trying to find patterns that you notice. Think about it as like maybe a hypothesis, you've heard that before, um, about what is happening. Before you even get up, I want you to keep in mind A, B, and C. So read these questions so you know what you're looking for. I'm going to recommend thinking about one question at a time. So maybe you're going to circulate the room once thinking about A, which asks about intercepts and turns. Then circulate the room one more time, thinking about B and then C. I'll also encourage you to maybe, like the first two or three, think about find patterns, and then when you move to the fourth and fifth one, think about if it holds true, whatever you are thinking. For the gallery walk, this is great. They've done a great job on this, but I want you just to skip it for now, okay? Just skip this one. So only analyze these five. We're going to talk about this one a lot more heavily in the, the second part of the lesson, okay? So read those three questions. Know what you're looking for. And when you get up, I want you to stay with your group and talk with your group to figure out these questions, okay? You got it? All right, so go ahead, read those questions, and then move around the room oh, as you will. How do you come back to
not ready? You're done writing? It's wood. Okay, we're going to talk about this. We're going to do some, some um, quick notes real quick to go over this. So, what did you guys first it asks for? First it asks for, what about the max number of x-intercepts? What did you guys think? How do you find the maximum number of x-intercepts? The degree, yeah. Power of, of your highest term. So, in your quick notes section, you can write this down. The max number of x-intercepts equals the degree. Right? So this one, our highest power is 4. And how many x-intercepts do we have? Or zeros do we have? 4. Okay. Now, what did you guys discover about the turns? What are we thinking? So you're thinking degree minus 1 will tell us the amount of turns. Does anyone think anything else? Bounces off? If it's an even or odd. Clarify. Even or odd degree. Even or odd degree, what about it? <laughs> okay, I do I do like Paige's thinking and it is the degree, the maximum amount of turns is the degree minus one. So max amount of turns. <laughs> Minus one. Did you say ask her now? Okay. Now we go into end behavior. And it asks, how do we determine if the graph is the same or different on each side? So what did we find? The number of terms, so you're saying like one, two, three, four, there's four terms. Okay, so if it was four terms, then you would think it would go the opposite way. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six terms that's the opposite way. The one, two, three, four, five terms. That could be a you in this direction, but this has four terms, one, two, three, four, and if it were whole term the same, it would be going opposite way. So that was a very good, you didn't even look this one. So out of those that you looked at, that is a good pattern that you found. I'm going to say that's not going to hold true all the time. That's a good pattern that you found though. Um, if the terms, the number of the terms in the graph is even or odd, it's determined. So like if it's an odd number in the terms of the graph, then it's going to go in the same direction. Okay, interesting. Okay, hold that thought. If the degree of if the highest degree is even or odd. So if it's odd, what do you? How's it going to be? Okay, so you're saying the same thing in a sense. Because we, we identified as the max amount of time turns is the degree minus 1, and you're saying if that is an even number, then it's going to go opposite ways, which is a, a kind of a complex way of thinking about it. That's really interesting that you noted that pattern. It's not necessarily wrong, but I'm going to make it simplified for you. So what Amari said earlier was this degree, if it is an odd number, it's going to go opposite ways the end behavior, and if it's an even number, like this, it's going to go the same way. Did I sing a song for you guys? I don't remember. Oh, no. No. Not this I always one. do have a song. Sing this one. I didn't sing this one. I didn't think I did. Okay, it's to YMCA. Um, I guess I cheated you guys out of this one when I first taught first period. But it's like, 
E. Okay, y'all, I need to watch because I'm doing hand motions, okay? <laughs> it goes even odd. Da 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 da. Even <laughs> odd. So whenever it's even, don't, no, don't look at me like that. <laughs> whenever it's even, what are my hands doing? They're going the same direction. And when it's odd, what are my hands doing? Different directions. That's how I, I know. I always have songs because the teacher, when I came through Algebra 2, taught me many different songs to remember things. So, exactly what Mari said. When it's odd, they're going different directions. And when they're even, same direction. Okay, so let's generalize that. So when it's an even degree, they're going same direction. The end behavior is going the same direction. And it's an odd degree. The end behavior is going opposite directions. coefficient affects the graph. How do you think it affects the graph? What did y'all discover? Okay, so like positive or negative, right? So if the leading coefficient, we'll say, we'll say um, for an even function, okay? For an even function, which means it's just raised to an even power, if the leading coefficient is positive, these are my evens, right? What do we think a positive leading coefficient? Look around the room. Do you see a positive leading coefficient? And if so, what does it look like? You're pointing to this one? Yeah. So the end behavior, both of these are going up, and we have a positive leading coefficient. So it's going to look something along the lines of this. We don't really know what's happening in the middle. You can think about if this is our parabola, it would be like that. But if it's not a parabola, you got some funky stuff happening in the middle, exactly what you see right there. So the end behavior, if you just want to denote it with arrows, that is good. Okay, if we had an even negative leading coefficient, a negative leading coefficient and an even power, what would it look like? Do you see anyone around the room? Right there, behind group three in the pink and purple graph. So the the end behaviors would be going down, right? Okay, so now odd. We had an odd degree. And we have a positive leading coefficient. How do we think that's gonna look? Like this one? <coughs> like this one. And how I explained it to first period, if you guys will think about the line y equals x, right? That's my line y equals x. It has a positive slope and it's starting from the third quadrant and going up to the first quadrant, right? It's increasing. So like this one, it's starting down here and it's increasing to this quadrant. There's just some funky stuff going on in the middle. So for an odd positive leading coefficient, my arrows would be something like this. And then for an odd negative, what's it going to look like? Opposite. Right? So up here, down here. And you can think about the line y equals negative x for that. So make sure you are taking those notes. Did you guys discover anything else? No? Okay, there's one more thing that I want to touch on. I'm running out of room, but I'm going to write it 
and orange under this one, okay? So it's going to be formalizing like how to write in behavior notation. So let's just look at what's it called? End behavior. Mm -hmm. So as we're approaching infinity, right? On your x, your x's are approaching infinity. We answer this: What's happening? With your y values. They're increasing and what are they approaching? Infinity. So you're going to write this as this is an um, even positive leading coefficient. So as x approaches, this arrow right here means approaches. As x approaches infinity, f of x, y'all said it also approached infinity because it's going up and up forever and ever. This is important. You all have to write this on your understanding check. Today? I don't want to show you today. You know you have a test tomorrow, too. So as X approaches infinity, F of X approaches infinity as well. Now look at the other side. As x is approaching negative infinity, <laughs> so as x is approaching negative infinity, what is f of x doing? So as x is approaching negative infinity, what is my f of x doing? Approaching what? Negative infinity. It's going this way. What's happening to the end of the graph? It's going up, right? This is continuing up and up and up and up. So it's positive infinity. My y values are positive up here. Yeah. F of x is approaching positive infinity. Okay, let's look at this one real quick. This is an odd degree for the positive leading coefficient. So odd. As x approaches infinity, what's happening? What is y approaching? Right here, as x is approaching infinity, what is happening? I'm going up positive. Yeah, my f of x, my y is approaching positive infinity as we keep going over and over. f of x is approaching positive infinity. Now, the flip side. As x is approaching negative infinity, what's happening with my graph? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? My y's are going down and down and down forever, approaching negative infinity. So f of x is approaching negative infinity. How do we feel about that? Let's just talk about this one right here. Once y'all are done writing. Okay, so on this one, as x is approaching positive infinity, what's happening with my y values? As x is approaching positive infinity, what's happening with my y values? It's going towards negative infinity. What about on the flip side? As x is approaching negative infinity, y is approaching positive. Right here in the purple, what's happening both on the right and the left side as x is approaching infinity and negative infinity? They're both going to negative infinity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So on the back of this sheet, it's a check your understanding. Uh, it's an understanding check. <laughs> Go ahead and talk with your groups. I'm going to give you all like five-ish minutes. Maybe a little less than that to answer these questions, okay? Make sure you're talking it, talking it through with your groups. And the um, this is relating to that generic function that's on the top of your sheet, not your equation. That's the one thing that I know. I know, like, I know, like, I know, like, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
I know that this is true, but then it'd be five months to one city.